The 6.5 is on the road at Google Cloud Next 2024 here in our favorite city, Las Vegas, or the city that, Dan, we find ourselves in a lot. You know, it's incredible the amount of interest in AI. It probably started, kicked off, well, it really kicked off a few years back, but this big Gen AI thing hit. And we both said in our end of year podcast, if you remember, that 2023 was about putting the building blocks together. And then what did we say about 2024? It's going to be the year of AI implementation. There we go. Exactly right. Yeah, it's a it's it's starting to come to fruition. You know, we knew that you and I, you know, we like silicon and semiconductors, and that was part of what we heard here at Google Cloud Next today. But we knew that all this infrastructure, all this spend that's going on in the marketplace right now was going to need to start yielding returns. So all these these cloud providers that are building these big AI data centers, they need to build applications, they need to build tools and technologies that enterprises and consumers can drive right. the future off of. And uh, we got a little bit of that here today at Google Cloud Next in Las Vegas, which I'm going to go ahead and say, not my favorite place, <laughs> but it is an amazing place to have a conference. And this conference so far has lived up to the expectations. It is great. And a lot of the enterprise that we talk to, I mean, it literally is where do I start? Which workloads do we prioritize here? And with us, we just happen to have Oliver who leads GTM for Generative AI with us. Welcome to the 6.5. Thanks for having me, appreciate yeah. it. We want to learn all about, you know, your multiple times around the globe and, and what you're learning about customers. We really appreciate that. Yes. Cool. So Oliver, uh, you are a, you, you, you left and now you've come back. He's you, back, baby. You, uh, give me and uh, give us a little bit of the background. What, what drove you back to Google Cloud? So I joined Google Cloud from Microsoft in 2018. Um, I came over because I saw the opportunity and what Google was starting to build out. Basically, is they were really doubling down on cloud. This is just before Thomas turned up. Um, I worked for four years and built out a lot of the stuff on the West Coast. Some super exciting customers, many of the ones that are here today and sort of we've been talking about. Um, and then I went, uh, worked for an identity and security company, a company called Octa, for the last couple of years, and then rejoined in January to uh, lead the AI go-to-market effort, and specifically more around generative AI. So I, uh, I came back because I think for any of us that are sort of sitting in this world, and I was sitting in it in a security world, right. you saw the opportunity, but the bigger opportunities was generative AI across all parts of the stack and across all platforms. So. Uh, it was a great opportunity that I, I couldn't pass up and uh, excited to be here. Good to meet you both. You too. I can't imagine a better opportunity too to come into and just the, uh, I mean, I was working during the internet build out and Me too. this excitement is is literally, it's, it's, it's just, it feels so much bigger and more real. Because you know we did the internet build out, you did the dark fiber and then you know every, everything went kaput, but what was there created um, literally the next two or three cycles. I mean, you, you couldn't have had smartphone without the web, right? You couldn't have had social without the web. It just, it changed everything. And I, I, I feel like this, this is, right? As analysts, we have to distinguish between trends and fads, and this is an absolute uh, trend. So you obviously talk to a lot of customers you and your team you're you're flying around you're talking to them what are you hearing what are they talking to you about maybe talking about their pain points why why google why do they go with you let me i just i think you you mentioned i just got back from a a world tour i sort of i think i sat with 80 plus customers in i think it was about 40 days um a really, really good experience. Obviously, I came in and my number one was priority was to go sit in front of clients, whether they're existing customers, potential customers, or um, you know, prospects. Um, there's a few themes that sort of came back. Um, and you mentioned sort of one of them, you talked about the building blocks and production. I got a slightly different phrase, but I think it's the same thing, which is a huge amount of sort of focus moving from experimentation to production. Yeah. And I've even got sort of a, a, another phrase that I think of is, there's some great experimentations moving into production, but I think the next phase after that becomes scale production. So you're actually seeing some really interesting stuff start to go into prod, but it's still in small parts of the organization, or it's a customer facing chatbot in digital channel, but it hasn't been propagated across all digital channels. And I think right. sort of this phase and this year, to your point, this is very much about production. And I think those companies that are more on the leading edge, you'll start to see more scale production, which I think then this becomes 
then this really lights up in terms of sort of blowing the doors off, I think, of where it can go. So that's sort of, that's sort of one bucket. The other bucket is sort of a huge amount of conversation around use case. I mean, obviously, to your point, the technology is the foundation. Right. But sort of this moving out of just experimentation and figuring out where do I spend my time, lots of engagement with the clients around help us identify use cases. And they're typically ending up being industry-based conversations. So a lot of conversations around business processes, depending on your industry, are really driving how generative AI can make a difference to their business, whether that's on the productivity side, sort of automation on the back end, or even very specifically around customer experience like we just talked about. So those would be a couple of the big themes that I got from my conversations over the last yeah, few weeks. It's interesting too, um, what we're seeing is um, typically the data domain, and I don't mean in the data scientist uh, realm, but it's typically reserved to the data domain like ERP or SEM or PLM. But, but the future is going to be all about combining those different types of data to give, get the best output possible. And um, again, we're, we're literally just at launch, but uh, you know, we've talked to enterprises that, that are able to you know, increase productivity 40, 50% in some areas today. And that's not a theoretical number, that's a real number that, that's executed to. So um, again, we're just starting to see yeah. the beginning. We have to connect this huge build out too with enterprises seeing the benefit, yeah. right? Or I think we know what happened. I like what he, uh, you know, what he said about going to prod and going to, you know, I mean, I think we use the word implementation, but I think you're yeah, talking the same. the same thing. Yeah. And the point is, is that is really the kind of the chasm that companies are crossing right now as they went from, hey, we did something very limited in a very small scope to, hey, we're going to do it a little bit bigger. We're going to deploy it. And then it's about speed. You know, we've got a lot of intelligence on our side as analysts that's basically saying companies are spending more, but they're, 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 they're also, they're concerned about the ability for their vendors and their in integrators to do the work, competency, capabilities. So we're seeing a lot of pivot, we're seeing a lot of uh, high expectations, but we're also seeing a lot of budget shift that way, which is yeah. you know another reason that first question I asked you, why'd you come over here? More it's, budget, but- It's more budget, but honestly, it's if you think, I mean, to your point, I was around in the tech build out at the end of the 90s right. and you were building something, although you didn't know what was going to sit above it. Yep. Yes, we're building out stuff, but we know what's going to sit above this this time. Right. That for me is the difference. Like there was this big, to your point, fiber infra build. Yes. We didn't really know what was going to happen in 2000 and that sort of stuff. I think we now, it's almost like we're redoing it, but we're re redoing the whole stack, yes. not just the lower part of it. So from a Gen AI standpoint right now, why are customers picking Google Cloud? And sort of how do you see yourself? What's the thing that's helping you win against those other very capable uh, cloud providers in this area? I think the first thing, I still think we're still in a bit of, this is still an early phase, sure, right? Absolutely. Like I think there's a lot of focus on the model, right? Sort of I've sort of said in my times with clients, the model, it's a lot of model game, okay? Whether it's us, whether it's OpenAI, the great work that the Anthropic team are doing, a lot of the stuff obviously in open source. There's a lot of focus on the model, but there's as much focus on the model, especially when you get into the enterprise space, as there is on the platform. Right. And, you know, in addition to the great work that I think Demis and the DeepMind folks are doing, there's a huge focus, and you saw the other announcements today around Vertex. So for me, when I start to think about the calls that we might get, that maybe one of the other providers doesn't get, and I'll be as diplomatic as Thomas is, a big part of it is we have a first party model. We have a really strong commitment to the ecosystem and other models, but we also have a really strong platform where we're basically taking out a lot of the complexity of building and running AI at scale across an organization. And then you look at our history, yeah, sort of the 20 of years, yeah, you have a lot of the history of building it. I mean, I know you met with Mark today from the infra side. You look at what we're doing with TPU, GPU, and obviously the announcement today with that for Axion and, yeah, the, right. and the ARM. Like that infrastructure has been built over time to serve at scale AI centric applications, which is obviously our own applications. So you take all of that goodness and history and culture, you then apply it. I think that's one of the reasons why we get in the call, but I will also say, Vertex becomes a really important part of that conversation because that's the platform which we think becomes really the core AI platform for accessing all these different models over time. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we get a lot of feedback that talks about Vertex AI simplifying, and I, I think you, you just talked about removing complexity. There's so many questions, and I feel like what you've done on Vertex AI and then adding um, grounding techniques yes. uh, RAG techniques to be able to leverage some of the uh, on-prem data, 
uh, is, is going to be super important going to the future. One thing I don't think you get enough credit for is the fact that Google actually has the largest data state of any company on the planet. You were pretty good um, with data. We think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it's it, our mission statement. Yeah, been at to it for organize a the world's information and make it, you know, universally accessible and useful. That's our mission statement of the company. And so it's we're grounded in it. Yeah, and then and then applying that to an enterprise is there is there just is not an enterprise that's too big uh, for you to service. And listen, I'm not confused, right? There's a consumer data state sure. and a commercial enterprise data state, but. Uh, planning for that large of a data state and whether it's, um, again, the underlying compute, memory, storage, networking is a very difficult thing. And then you, you add on that the complexity of generative AI where latency is, 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 is everything. It seems like that would, that would be a factor too. I think so. I mean, I think, you know, we, I often, talk to clients that infrastructure is not commoditized. I know you guys know infrastructure and chips better than most. You understand what we've built from an infrastructure yeah. standpoint, which is highly specialized and honestly, unbelievably performant relative to other platforms. TPU is incredible. Yes. I mean, the fact that you trained all of your Gemini models on the TPU yes. is a mind blower when I think conventional wisdom is like, oh, you can't do an LLM without a GPU. And listen, I know Google Cloud loves GPUs too. We do. Uh, and, but we it's love like, all platforms. No, no, but exactly. Yes. But I, I still think that that is pretty good. And, and there's even not a knowledge and understanding that, that you do some of your own networking silicon. And, and, and that's custom. I, I, I could talk about this all day, but you know we do have to let you go because I'm sure you have some places to be, Oliver. But uh, talk a little bit about you know kind of some of the overall you know most interesting things here at the event. Things that maybe what are the things you're hoping that the audience out there hears from from your perspective about generative AI go to market. I mean, I think some of the um, some of the announcements today were pretty incredible. Not as much on the model piece, but actually on the platform. And I'll always come back to the platform. I sort of spent. The, almost close to 30 years selling to the enterprise. And I think you have to have that platform in place to be able to run these systems at scale. And to your point, you know, whether it's the privacy, it's the safety, it's the responsibility aspect and all the tooling we're putting into Vertex, that for me is a really important part of our story. Um, I think the other thing is just continue to watch the evolution that we're doing with Gemini. And I've just been actually with some meetings with Demis and some clients and just, the rapid innovation and how they're thinking sort of, you know, not just the next iteration relative to sort of open AI or something, but actually way further ahead. Right. I think you'll continue to see us show deep leadership around sort of model capability. And then the third thing is, you know, you, you sort of talked about it, but we're a big believer in open systems and open platforms. And yes, we obviously have our own first party, but the work we're doing with Anthropic, the work we're doing with Mistral, um, the other, all the, you know, hugging face, like, our commitment to the ecosystem is as, as centric as it is to our own first party. And I think that's sometimes what people are now starting to think about Vertex is really Vertex becomes your control plane for AI. And then really we see an ongoing proliferation of models and Vertex is almost like the entry point for running and building all your AI across a multiple set of models. And we also think over time, there'll be just huge model proliferation, whether it's at the foundational level like Gemini or even domain and task. Those would be the three areas I'd say we feel very good about from an announcement standpoint today. Yeah, zero sum game is not the reality. And so we, both Patrick and I, so often end up saying it's never going to be a sum of zero, meaning, you know, everyone's going to run on just first party. Or just, it's totally. It, so you're, you're I mean, enterprise has won a choice since yep. enterprise was invented. So, I mean, even though it's funny that, you know, cloud started 15 years ago with VM size of one, yes. with one processor, one choice of memory and storage. But the, the reality is that, that enterprise wants that, they want that diversity. And, and I also think like in some of the models, the, some of the stuff that the open source community is doing, and you get into smaller size model, there's going to be value in yes. lots of different models. And I think we want to embrace that. Yeah, I'd love to have you back sometime to talk awesome. about that. Oliver, thanks thank so much you. for joining us thanks here on 6.5. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our coverage here at Google Cloud Next 2024 in Las Vegas. And of course, join us for all of our 6.5 episodes. But for this one, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, it's time to say goodbye. See y'all later.